Questions for these guys? Please give my attention and we can get started. We'll go on the far right. Tony, go ahead. Yeah. Well, like, Will, obviously, it sounds like you guys were on a flight over yesterday when you were the gym camp. Um, sounds like maybe there's hope this morning. If you can coach, then obviously we see what happens. Can you take us through your guys' last 24 hours and, and just what it, how this program has responded and what it means? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, obviously uh, it sucks, uh, you know, that that had to happen on the flight. But, uh, you know, we, we're one, you know what I'm saying? It made us stronger. You know, uh, obviously we wanted Coach Harbaugh to be here, but we did it for him today. You know, we did it for him. And, you know, we've been going through a lot lately, you know what I'm saying? But it's only brought us closer together, you know. And, uh, man, I love my brothers. It was a good job today. All right, Steve. Well, talk about what the defense had. You guys had to protect that lead the whole fourth quarter. Talk about what you did with, with Keandre and also what your the entire defense did there. Yeah, I mean, the whole game, it was just, we, and our mindset was just having a pillar game. And strain the whole game, play hard, and do it for Coach Harbaugh. So our mindset was just play together, play as hard as we can, and execute the, execute the calls that uh, Coach Miller displayed for us. And that's all we were thinking about, get the ball back to the offense as much as we can and get them off the field. What was it like after the game for you? What did uh, you do? Oh, it felt great. I mean, I feel like I tried to hold my side of the field down as much as I can, made a few plays out there. I'm just happy with the win, happy we get to go home and have a happy play. Standing Bob. Mm -hmm. JJ and Blake, you guys didn't throw a pass in the second half, like no pass interference. Was that, you knew that from the beginning? Were you making some sort of a point and just support this way? Absolutely not. You know, I think one of our strengths is being able to adapt to what the defense has given us. And, you know, with one of the best offensive lines in the country and obviously two of the best backs in the country, like, we just got to take what they give us. And, you know, we adapted, we adjusted, and we kept rolling. Yeah, uh, I mean, I uh, believe Coach just said it was 32 straight runs, mm -hmm. you know, but going to halftime, we said, you know, up front, we're going to dominate. You know, I just kept preaching them, just push, man, fight, fight, fight. You know, we're going to run hard and something's going to break, and, you know, that uh, that's what happened, you know. So I'm so proud of the offensive line, the tight ends, receivers, nine, and Don and myself, and you know, everyone else, you know, it was just a great, uh, great win. Do you guys know where Harbaugh watched the game from? No, I do not, but uh, I know he enjoyed it. Yeah, we FaceTimed him after, and he was... No, he was the jolly good fellow. Face tiger, he said? Yeah. Did you Don sing that there. for him? Uh, no, we did not. That was actually a great idea. Though. We should have. <laughs> we definitely should have. In the front here, Clayton. You guys were checking your watches a lot with that celebration. What was that? What was that all about? Clayton. I mean, uh, you know, they left some uh, bait out there this week. Uh, you know you know what that was. Yeah, you saw it. You know, that's, I don't really have to say too much about it, but you know, it was clickbait for sure. Um, on the right here, Mitch. Uh, JJ and Blake, did you? Uh, what was the last thing that Coach Harbaugh said to you? I guess this morning or whatever before you left. And was there anything amongst the players where you said, you know, we have to do this for him, or whatever, before you guys went out? Um, you know, to me personally, he just told me, you know, I love you so much. Go out there, be you, and have fun. Uh, what he said to the team was just, you know, always great messages. He has pregame. We like to keep that in house. But uh, yeah, he had a great message for us last night that, you know, along the lines of no matter what happens, go out there and do you guys. Hey, did you guys uh, see him do it? Did you guys, uh, wasn't that good a question? Did you guys um, <laughs> say anything amongst yourselves, you know, before the game, like what you had to do with players because of his absence? You want to ask that? I mean, you know, not, we didn't really have to say too much. You know, uh, yesterday that was already enough fuel to the, to the fire, you know, and uh, we know we wanted to go out there and just uh, fight for mission, you know, fight for each other and fight for Coach Harbaugh, you know. Um, you know, that's what we did. You know, there wasn't much that had to be said because we knew what we had to do, and uh, we, we handled it. All right, we've got five more in the queue. We'll see what we have time for after that. Standing on the right, Charlie. Wait, you and Donovan have long talked about kind of getting that elusive long run. You got two of them today. Can you talk about both that 44-yard run and that 30-yard touchdown late in the game? Yeah, uh, the 44-yard run, um, you know, the tight ends did a good job. Number zero kind of went inside. We were able to log them, uh, and it was just green grass. On, uh, on the 30, however long that one was, uh, we kind of baited them inside. It was just inside zone, and there was an open hole and bounced out. The, the linebacker came on the inside, and it was just a safety. He took a bad angle, um, and that was that. And you've got blood running down your face. Do you remember the play or the specific moment where that blood started seeping out? Uh, I'm not sure. It was kind of all game, you know, so. It had to be early on. <laughs> on your line. Yeah. I saw it bleed and I was like, oh, I've seen that before, but, you know, I know this guy can take from me. <laughs>
Hey, standing here to your right, Adam. Uh, JJ, uh, Coach Moore was really emotional after the game. Yeah. Why do you think that was, and what do you think this process has been like for him and for you guys with him? Um, you know, Coach Moore is actually one of the most passionate, you know, prideful human beings I've ever been around, and he just puts his absolute all into this football team, into, you know, this offense. And, you know, he's just, you know, when someone gives it their all, and we go out there and execute the way he wants us to. It's just, you know, like a proud dad moment almost. And, you know, that's what we love about him. He just coaches with so much passion. Um, and he believes in every single one of us. And with that passion, it's a dangerous little mix. Okay, standing in the back in the white beanie there. Okay. I, a lot of coaches will say, don't let the outside noise distract you. But Harbaugh kind of said, use that as fuel. This is a very loud atmosphere. How are you guys kind of able to overcome that and pull out the blend? I'll say this first, um, you know, Al Glick Fieldhouse with the new speakers we got, it was a lot louder in there than it was out there, I'll tell you that. Um, I was afraid coming into the game I might lose my voice, so yeah, just the preparation throughout the week was great and, uh, you know, we just executed. Yeah, you know, uh, for me, um, for, the, for what, I, what I saw was, you know, when we started fast and we scored, you know, they quieted down, you know, and as we kept just, you know, Driving them off the ball, driving them off the ball, defense stopping. You know, Will making big plays, JJ making big plays. You know, everyone just started making big plays, and then you looked up in the student section, everyone slowly started leaving. You know, so you know we just played our game. We you know, eventually, you know, we were able to quiet quiet them down throughout the game, but especially at the end. One more thing to add to that: when you have the best defense in the country, yeah. it's very very hard to you know, get momentum going and get that crowd into it. So, you know, blessed to have those boys. That's for sure. Sure. Time for just a couple more. Um, back to the right, Tony, and then Chris. Yeah, guys, <clears throat> every year is obviously its own year, and you say that's why you play the game. Could you guys ma have imagined the, the way these 10 weeks have gone? And you just, uh, I mean, what, what do you even say? No, nah, uh, you know, never could imagine this, but uh, one thing I will say uh, this does is build character, you know, and that's what I was always told, you know, when hard times build character, you know, and I think it's definitely a built character within our team, um, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, I would say, you know, I saw this quote the other day on Instagram that said, the mindset you choose when adversity hits is the determining factor if you win or lose. And I feel like, you know, with this outside adversity, this, you know, team has this one track mindset that, you know, we've been developing for almost two years now and especially this past off season. So, you know, I just feel like, you know, anything that comes at this team, we're going to be ready for it and we're going to use it to our advantage. Okay, sitting in the front, Chris. What do you guys say to the people who say you needed this win to validate what you've done the last two years and to say that everything you've done is because of the science and stuff? You got it. No. We got the win. Mm -hmm. That was what you were looking for. Bojo? Just following up on that, the motivation coming closer to the, is it because of the sign stealing and stuff? Is it because you guys haven't played anybody in, in the outside eyes? What, what stung you guys the most that Bojo did? Get the question now. Um, you know, I would say we're not motivated by you know outside stuff. Of course, you know it's always great, but we have a drive as a team. We have a standard that we live up to every single day. So no matter what, if there's noise or not, we're always going to be driven to hold ourselves to that standard of you know ec excellence, attention to detail, all the little things that we harped on this off season. And uh, yeah, I just say we're driven, not motivated. Okay. Thank you all.